Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to our first tactical review of Jose Mourinho's Tottenham Hotspur. Today I'm going to look at the games against Manchester City in the Premier League and Luda Goretz in the Europa League to take a look at the different defensive and offensive tactical styles that I think can uh, show Mourinho, Jose Mourinho's Tottenham uh, a path to the Premier League title this season. Uh, as a bit of a disclaimer, first of all, I do want to say I'm using the Luda Goretz game purely based on the tactical implementation of what Jose Mourinho is asking of the players. Uh, I don't want to get too carried away th- with the performance, as I know a lot of fans don't, given it was um, a weakened Bulgarian side. Uh, but I think it was really impressive the players who have not been seen a lot of game time this season so expertly implementing those tactics. I think that does deserve credit, but also it- it's a game that we dominated quite a bit uh attacking me so I think it, it's the best example we can find of the the tactics that we have seen in Marino's team uh, throughout the entire season so far um if you do want more of these tactical videos please make sure to hit the thumbs up and comment down below if you do enjoy it and also subscribe to the channel if you are new and you want more of this plus Tottenham fan voice podcasts and interactive live streams so first of all we're going to take a look at the game against Manchester City and I've already identified some some key areas in this one that I'm going to take a look at where we look at how the uh, the fullbacks were isolated against Manchester City's wingers. I think you can see there, aside from our fullbacks and City's uh, wider two of the front three, the entire game was played very, very narrow. And that it was it was a stroke of genius from Jose Mourinho. He was he was inviting Manchester City to play the ball out wide. And for a lot of the time, they they tried not to, but they did look at um, later on in the game, kind of creating the space uh, out wide using their their wider midfielders. We're going to look a bit at that and also how. Uh, Hoingman Son on the right-hand side and uh, the narrow wingers really helped Tottenham um, come out of this one with the three points. So let's just take in away um, what we have in, in there already. What we're going to look at first of all is um, Hoingman Son and the the stroke of genius, I suppose, from Jose Mourinho in putting him out on the right-hand side because we know uh, Son, he plays on the left. He's a, a right-footed player who likes to cut in off the left and there was definitely an element of surprise when, when the lineup came out. I think, first of all, we, we, we knew it was going to be Bergwijn on the left. And as the game started, as the game progressed, we could see very clearly it was Hoingman's son on the right-hand side. And he was there for two reasons. And the first one was, um, here we have Joao Cancelo, the Manchester City, who I suppose the, their formation at its base was a 4-3-3 with Cancelo playing um, in left-back. But this is a tactic City have, have employed quite a bit. We saw with Alexander Zinchenko last season. Um, it was used against Tottenham, it's used in a lot of their games. We also saw it uh, in previous seasons, you know, Fabian Delph, the year they signed Benjamin Mendy, Delph was very successful uh, in left-back at Manchester City. And this is one of the main reasons why, because th- they do effectively play their left-back as um, as a holding midfielder in that double pivot with Rodri. And we have there as well Kyle Walker playing as, as a third centre-back. So City defensively were extremely narrow. And what they do like to do is keep the ball narrow then and spread it out wide and... Uh, at, attack from out there and Tottenham invited them to do it it was very brave from Jose Mourinho th- there's no doubt about that if you're looking out here at Mahrez against Regulon Mahrez one of the best one-on-one attackers in uh, in, in the Premier League at the moment you've out here you've Ferran Torres up against Serge Aurier and Aurier very rash defender Torres a man on form scored a hat-trick against Germany in, in a couple the, the days leading up to this game and it was so brave from Jose Mourinho but it, it worked absolutely perfectly and what I'm going to do, I suppose, to, to show the different tactics employed from by the couple of teams, I'm going to sort of play out um, a, a very, very common pattern of play that we did see. And for a lot of this game, the, the ball was kind of in and around these areas, with City kind of having a harmless possession in and around the box. And they did at times uh, play it out wide to to either winger, but we had uh, our own wingers kind of doubling back on the possession there, which uh, forced the ball, say in this instance, it forced it back out again to Walker. And Bergwijn was straight in there. And what they were doing, Son and, and, and Bergwijn, was they were preventing this ball from being played into uh, Kevin De Bruyne and into Bernardo Silva. So the two of them were re- were really well kept out of the game by the, the wingers dropping back. And again, everything I'm going to talk about today was, was very, very clever from, from Jose Mourinho. So De Bruyne, primarily the area that he does thrive, is in, in that sort of... The kind of inner flank there. Uh, he's not playing out really well, but he's also not playing centrally. And it's in those positions where he does like to pick up space and play that ball in behind the defence. And it's where he has to right. It's it's cost us in the past. We're looking a few years ago when they beat us at the Etihad. Um, there was a ball like that that fell, fi- found uh, Phil Foden at the back post and they beat us by one goal to nil. But if, if you watch Kevin De Bruyne, that's where he is best in that sort of uh, area there. But Tottenham were absolutely sensational in, in keeping the ball away from him there. And Bernardo Silva as well um, on the other side. And... You know, 
of course, Pep Guardiola will try different things to to try and counteract these um the the areas of the game that Tottenham are winning tactically. So by by these wingers dropping in like this straight away, Tottenham had uh, two of uh, Manchester City's key creators uh, really kept out of this game, and it it forced City into I, I I'm not sure I call them tactical mistakes because I can't imagine they were things that Pep Guardiola would have wanted them to do, but it is. Um, it's things that did happen out in the pitch that, that allowed Tottenham to get into these really, really dangerous positions and, and cause Manchester City problems. And you can see there from where, the way Tottenham are lining up, I suppose it's it's a 4-3-2-1 with, with wingers coming very narrow there in, in Bergwijn and Son. But the second we got in possession, that formation changed massively. So we, we already have from a defensive side, we've Regulon dealing with Riyad Mahrez. Uh, Mahrez attempted four take-ons on Regulon. Regulon won all four of those. And we know he got a ham off Jose Mourinho for that, which uh, is a weird sentence to say. We've uh, Sergio Aurier out on the right-hand side, Del very well and fair on Torres. Again, Son was dropping deep to double up on Torres when he got the ball. Aurier not allowing him down the line, Son not allowing him inside. So that ball was forced back to either Laporte or Joao Cancelo. And then Son was stepping in ahead of Bernardo Silva straight away and cutting out that pass there. So they, they were inviting Manchester City wide so that they could then double up on whatever player was out there and force them back into the middle. And eventually City got frustrated at attempting to break out, uh, break in out wide. And they, they they tried to break us down centrally, and that was never going to work with these players doubling up there on De Bruyne, Yusuzoko, and Son doubling up on Son, and Hoybier patrolling this area in here, which we, we know he is uh, the very best at. And what Tottenham did was they were absolutely devastating on the counter attack, and Manchester City could not deal with it. And one of the main reasons why City did struggle there was this man. Um, it was Rodri. Uh, in a way, I suppose you could you could say he was trying to just counteract perhaps a, a tactical flaw from Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola going into this game. But if he had stayed more disciplined in in his own area, I think City wouldn't have been wouldn't have looked as vulnerable uh, when Tottenham were breaking. And essentially, what was happening was De Bruyne say De Bruyne pulled out wide. You know, this is, this could be either side. This could be De Bruyne or Bernardo Silva. But De Bruyne pulls out wide. And Dombele drops behind him. Bergwijn drops in front of him. Uh, I don't know, let's, let's imagine the ball is played out here. Bergwijn makes the interception. Uh, and what Rodri did, which caused huge, huge problems for Manchester City, was he is the man who tried to implement that high press. The whole game through, when Tottenham gained possession in their own defensive third, Rodri was the man getting in there, um, trying to win possession. And straight away, Tottenham, you could see how well drilled they were in this transition. What happened every single time. Son gone up the right. Kane dropped deep and Ndombele got in that space between the lines as Cancelo comes across to cover Kane, try and make up for the, the space that's been uh, vacated by Rodri. And you can see just from there how vulnerable Manchester City are straight away because you've Cancelo trying to deal with, with Harry Kane and Ndombele. Kane, who has had a, an exceptional range of passing this season, and Ndombele, who's been a very creative player for us. And what Tottenham wanted to do immediately was then break into that space that's been left by Cancelo because... It's, you know, you can't say for certain, but I think what Guardiola would have preferred is when Tottenham got in the ball, that they could revert to a back four, have Joao Cancelo uh, sit out there to, to mark Son, Rodri in the middle, and De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva drop back. So they're in a 4-3-3, and they look a lot safer there, but they weren't allowed to do that because of Rodri breaking forward and Cancelo having to, to deal with that space in there. And there's a few pass maps that you can see. When Tottenham got possession, uh, the ball was played out right, so it went out right to Hingman Son, and then when we got in behind, it was switched to the left, where we had the runners like Kane and Dombele Bergwijn, and even at times Regulon making good moves up and down that left-hand side. And on the transition, uh, Manchester City just could not deal with it. And look, maybe <clears throat> you could have asked for a bit more from Bergwijn and Bernardo Silva in track and back, but Rodri did not need to make this step up, and he was high-pressing every time got, Tottenham got possession. And this ball was coming into Harry Kane, and so many times Kane made a clever little ball around the corner, or... I don't know, lobbed it over Cancelo and was getting that ball into Ndombele. And then all of a sudden, the forward runners, you'd Bergwijn, you'd Kane um, going in behind Ndombele, you'd Son making that run out the out the right-hand side as well. And as I said, Regulon making some runs too. And we were absolutely devastating on the counter-attack. I know our first goal came from uh, from a free kick, but it was, um, we had so many opportunities to get forward. And of course, the second goal did come from it when it was Giovanni Lo Celso, of course, on the pitch then. And very similarly, we were breaking forward through the centre. A lot of space was at the right-hand side. But because City had been dragged across, Laporte had to come and deal with Son. Diaz had to track the one of... I'm not sure who it was that time. It may not have been Ndombele. And then as Kane it was, who was progressing with the ball. 
um, Walker had to come across and deal with that. And the space opened up there for, I know it's Berg right here, but it was La Celso coming up that left-hand side. And you, we, we can see from the goal, it was it was De Bruyne who was tracking him back at that stage. But it's it's a, a, a lot a lot of the part of this is down to Jose Marino's fantastic uh, understanding of what Pep Guardiola was going to do. Because I was on We Are Talking TV yesterday and I was talk about, talking about it. And Guardiola has his tactics. He has, this is the way we play. This is the way we're going to play against everyone else. And... You know, that's the end of that, where Jose Mourinho has the ability to adapt his own game in order to counteract uh, what opposition teams are doing. And we got a lot of help from Rodri um, being so ill-disciplined in his high press. But uh, Tottenham did so well to to set up defensively in a way that, you know, Manchester City just could not break us down. And they'd just no opportunities whatsoever to... I think they only had one clear goal-scoring opportunity. And we, we really, really... Uh, held them out and it, all we needed was a devastating counter-attacking tactic and it worked uh it really did work down to a t and w- i think we're going to see something similar to this against chelsea on sunday although it'll be a bit different because chelsea will be a lot more dangerous with the balls in the wide area so i think we will see a small change in formation but i think at the basis we're going to see very similar tactics in terms of um trying to force chelsea into a certain area of the pitch and then attacking uh, devastatingly down whatever side it is and I think we could see a similar result uh, to what we saw on last Saturday. What I want to take a look at next is um, Tottenham's tactical approach to the game against Ludogorets. And again, I know it was only Ludogorets, but I want to look at the tactical side of this rather than the performance side, which for me is even more impressive given that it, it was players that, that aren't in our first team regularly, maybe excluding Bale, Doherty um, and Ndombele, although Ndombele was in a very different position last night to what he usually is. And... Everything from Jose Mourinho was was implemented absolutely perfectly. And what, we, what we're looking at here is the, the average position of every player in that game. Now, Tanganga and Sanchez were a bit deeper than that. But uh, just for the... Just because it is attacking, we're just going to show the, the attacking side of the pitch. But Sanchez and Tanganga were kind of uh, on the other side of that, the, the, the midfield circle. But what we have is, you can see just from this alone, uh, a lot of what Jose Mourinho tried to do. And you see here, Gareth Bale come extremely narrow. And this isn't, again, it's, just, it's not just last night. It's what we've done. Um, throughout the entirety of this season so far. And last night it was Gareth Bale, but the whole season through we've had a right winger come in narrow, which creates the space out here for that uh, for the right back to to get into the space there, get in behind and, and whip balls across the face of goal. So this, we've Gareth Bale dragging in that left back, uh, creating the space there for Doherty to go down. And we're going to put uh, the Ludogorets team in a second and kind of play that out as well. Um, you can see uh, Davis and Lucas on this side were... Uh, quite narrow as well, although uh, the majority of our play did come down that right-hand side, but we have trying to congest uh, Ludogorets into that area of the pitch um, and play our game down our right-hand side as well, which worked out absolutely superbly. Um, you can see Winkson and Dombele here in the double pivot, and Dombele a lot more used to playing uh, further forward uh, in the league this season, but he dropped back into that double pivot and was absolutely sensational. Uh, he was positive every time he got the ball, he was trying to move forward. And that it, it is a bit different to what we'd usually see from Hoybier and Sissoko playing in, in that duo in the middle of the park. Um, and then you have this link up between uh, Deli Ali and Carlos Vinicius, which, you know, we, shot, we saw Deli Ali have a very, very good game, got a, an assist for Vinicius and played a big part in that first goal as well. Um, so we're going to look at all those uh, different sort of tactical uh, bits from, from Jose Mourinho and how how we managed to to dominate the game, not just in terms of performance, but the, the tactics that have got us wins in, in the Premier League all season. Now, Ludogorets defended with a, a five at the back, a block of four in front of them and their lone striker up there, uh, not causing too many problems at all. Now, if we want to put Tottenham back in our starting formation, it was a four, uh, it, it wasn't really a four, two, three, one, but it was a four, three, three with Deli Ali playing perhaps a bit more advanced than the two in midfield. And we have Ludogorets there in the, um, in their five, four, one. And the first thing we're going to look at is is Gareth Bale out here and the way he was uh, utilised. And again, it happened when Jack Clark came on and I was exceptionally impressed with Clark and that you know he was so tuned into all these um, uh, tactical requirements of the right winger. And you know we continued to dominate the game down that side when he did come on. So effectively what happens is Gareth Bale moves into this space here, kind of in front of what was the, the third centre-back there, uh, getting in that space between the lines. And when he moves in, this left back has to come in with them because these these defenders in here already have their jobs. I think a, a big part of this as well was Deli Ali playing in this space here. You have the centre centre back marking Carlos Vinicius, but we know Deli Ali likes to make those runs beyond the striker. He can go either way, and and both those centre backs were preoccupied with Deli Ali 
And what they wanted to do was make sure he couldn't make those runs into the box either side. So this left back had to come in with Gareth Bale. And then all of a sudden you can see that space out on the right hand side uh, for Matt Doherty. And, you know, he, he did it absolutely perfectly. You you can see he's he's so far advanced in every single bit of possession we had. But the main thing was he kept his width um, at all times, even when the ball was out on the on the left hand side he kept his width and look you could say why doesn't this left mid just track him back but it, it's a bit more complicated than that because let's just imagine for a second Tottenham do that on both sides and Ben Davis is, is wide and high there you need your right mid tracking Davis your left mid tracking Doherty and then all of a sudden if you look at this midfield position here Spurs have a complete and utter overload and it's just way too easy to play beyond that midfield there give that ball into Dele Alley, and all of a sudden we're we're ahead of their back line and you know, we've runners Lucas on that side. Um, you've Bale running on that side. And you've, of course, Vinicius in the middle as well. So they couldn't afford to to put those uh, wide midfielders out on Doherty. And we put Davis back there to where he was. You couldn't afford to, to bring him all the way out there to Doherty. So what what they had to do was kind of get him to split uh, split the two. Uh, I suppose the possession in the middle or in Dombele and Doherty as well. But we know when you have Ndombele and Winks in the middle of that park, they have the ability to play that ball out there to Doherty. And we saw it so many times if it was Winks playing a uh, playing a high ball out that side, uh, lifting it over, everyone getting out to Doherty. Doherty was Ndombele playing a ball into feet. But so often, Matt Doherty got the possession out on that side. Now, again, it's not just this game. If you look at the way we played against Manchester United, now I know we were helped by by the red card for, for Anthony Martial, but Eric Lamella was dragging Luke Shaw in so, so narrow and it gave Aurier the the freedom of Manchester out on that right-hand side. We got a goal or two from that as well. But uh, this is, at, at its basis, how it works, is that Bale is bringing that defender inside, and you know they just can't afford to, to bring this midfielder out there, because again, if we do it on both sides, they're left uh, they're left wanting in the middle. So he has to split him, and we have the, the ability uh, in our midfield to get that ball out wide to Doherty. And that's a, a huge part of why Mourinho does employ these tactics, because he know he has the players who can pick out these sorts of passes. And all of a sudden, it's looking very dangerous for Ludogorets because they have this space left in behind them that Tottenham are fully capable um, of exploiting. And here we are now. So let's just play this out a bit more. So you've Gareth Bale being marked by this left back. The, the third centre back has to come across. He has to come across and try and stop Doherty from getting that ball inside. But then the, the domino effect that this starts um, is, is what caused Tottenham a, a lot of, or what caused Ludogorets a lot of trouble from Tottenham's wide crosses. Vinicius was making this run to the front post. Uh, dragging this centre back with him, then all of a sudden there's a lot of space here in front of Deli Alley, so he was running into this, and all of a sudden the next centre back has to come across there, and then Lucas is coming in, and the the, the numbers we were putting in in the box last night was it, it's not something we'd see uh, to this degree in the Premier League, but again you, we often do have a lot of players running into the box, so Lucas makes his run in there. This the last centre back or the the right back then has to come in, and Indomble I think was was sitting out in the edge of the box quite a bit as well, so attracting another midfielder back there. And so many bodies forward there, so many opportunities for something there for happen, to happen for Tottenham. But what impressed me so much about this was, even in these positions, the one thing on Jose Mourinho's mind was we need to be solid defensively. And he, he made sure that the whole way through we had uh, Ben Davis kind of sitting in this position here. So if that ball is crossed in, um, if it's cleared out to here, Davis is on him. You know, he, he doesn't have the space there. Uh, you'd, you'd like to fancy Ben Davis uh, one-on-one against any of these Ludogorets players. Um, on the flip side, if the ball breaks a bit more centrally, Davis is on it there, and Winks was sitting a bit more centrally in there. So Davis is on that ball, and we can keep t- keep things flowing. The ball comes into Winks, and then it's back out to Doherty, and we're swinging it in again. And it was a consistent theme from Spurs. Um, you've these two centre backs marking the one striker, and you've Winks watching the break of the ball here. And of course, if ever we did lose possession, the whole team came streaming back, and it was just so difficult for for anything to happen uh, for Ludogorets. Now, out of possession, things were a bit different. Um, I know we we weren't in that position often, but if you just get this team back into shape here, uh, you've Dombele and Winks in the double pivot, you've Vinicius up there, uh, these two. Um, a bit wider when we were out of possession. There we have the four in midfield for um, for Ludogorets. And this is kind of the way we shaped up uh, out of possession. I think maybe Deli Ali could have been uh, a bit more advanced. Let's just get rid of this uh, arrow there. And for me, this is where uh, this is where Harry Winks and, and Deli Alli, this is why they perform so well um, on the tactical side of things because, you know, out of possession, this is the way we're playing. And look at this formation. You've got your four at the back, you've got your two in the middle, you've got your three behind the striker, 
and then the lone striker up there on their own. It's a four two three one. It's what Harry Winks and Deli Ali know best. And I've been saying all along the the issues we're having with Winks and and, and Ali at the moment, they aren't a question of ability, they're not a question of attitude, they're not a question of anything other than these are just two players who do not fit in the system that Jose Mourinho likes to play. If it is that four three three, um with Harry Kane dropping deep, I was called even a four three one two. No matter what it is, um, they just don't fit into it because they all they really know, I suppose, is that four two three one, and I can't seem to get rid of these lines here. There we go. But this is where they, why they were so good last night, and it was Deli Ali getting in the space between the lines. Um, in terms of pressing, of course, it really helps because you have again he can go either way. He can press either centre back. He can also drop a bit deeper, keep an eye on the midfielders. You've Lucas and Bale out either side dealing with the wide defender and the wide midfielder, but then on the turn of possession. Uh, wherever it was that we won it back um, Ali was in that space between the lines and that's where he liked to pick up the ball and that's where he did cause Ludogorets problems last night so I think this this could be a way for Deli Ali and Harry Wings back into the Tottenham team their performance last night was brilliant we heard Jose Mourinho speaking about that but tactically we saw a bit of a different formation from Jose Mourinho and I, th- I think in this formation if we're playing it in the league um, I can really see Vinicius being that main man up front but I think it would be Kane back here rather than Deli Ali. And that's the biggest threat for Ali at the moment is that Kane is beginning to drop deeper and become that playmaker, uh, the man making those late runs into the box that, that Ali was for so long. We saw it when Kane and Vinicius played together for that short period against um, West Brom. That's exactly what Kane was doing. But it's encouraging for Deli Ali that in the one game where we were kind of back in this system, again, even though it was just out of possession and on this transition, I think it's encouraging for him that there there could be a, a position um, for him in the team. And... It was just a, a tactical brilliance from, from Jose Mourinho. It, it really was. And again, there's going to be a lot of people saying it's only Ludogorets. I know, but these are the tactics that we've seen in the league all season and that we're going to, we're going to continue to see when we do play the lesser teams. And it's, it's really encouraging that again, these players who do not play often were so tuned into it. And we already know the players that do play regularly in the Premier League are, are fully capable of, of using this to our benefit. Um, I don't think we're going to see Ndombele in that role. Uh, too often, I think we will see him uh, in a four-three-three, kind of playing a bit more advanced. Uh, it's got, of course, going to be Regulon down this left-hand side, which, when Doherty or if it is Aurier gets into that space vacated by Gareth Bale, we have a bit more attack and threat on the left-hand side. If it is going to be someone like Regulon, but for now, this is the way we played last night. It was absolutely brilliant against Man- against Chelsea on Sunday. As I said, I think it's going to be a bit more similar to the. To the game against Manchester City, I don't think we're going to force them out wide. I think we're going to try and keep them contained in the middle of the park. And I think we can beat Chelsea um, if, if we do if we do play it like that. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised to see Chelsea line up in a four three three to to try and pin back our wingers. And you know, when Kane gets the ball in the middle, kind of take away that option for him to to spread it out wide because Bergwijn and Son or Son and Bale, whoever it is going to be, um, will be will be so deep. And I think that could be somewhere where Chelsea hurt us, but. I, I think we're in a situation now where we have a team so good, uh, a manager so tactically brilliant and players who are really buying into it, that on our day we can really beat anyone. Um, now look, again, if you have enjoyed this tactical analysis, if you think it was <laughs> worth your time watching or anything like that, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below so I know you want me to do more of these in the future. Uh, if you're new to the channel, if you have enjoyed this, if you want more Tottenham podcasts and uh, some collabs coming up in the next couple of weeks and interactive live streams as well, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And as always, thanks for watching.